Recording in progress. So welcome to the ELSA preview day. So this is our virtual version. We've been doing this one a couple of times. Um, I've got some special guests here. I've got some of my uh, faculty here. I've got some of my students here. So kind of along the way, I'll be introducing them. But the agenda basically is I'm going to take you through my basic admission presentation about the program via PowerPoint. And then we're going to flip it to kind of a Q&A section. Um, but before I do that, I just want to introduce some of the people I have here. Uh, if you're looking at gallery view, you can see all of us have our cameras on. So I'm Tim Alberg. I am the assistant director of admissions here at Elmhurst University. I am the admission counselor specifically that works with the ELSA program. I'm also the fine arts counselor. I work with um, everybody that comes here interested in art, music, or theater, whether you're a first year or a transfer student. So I got my fingers in a lot of different pies on campus. Um, uh, at least in my gallery view right below me is Mary Jo Ramacone, who is our career coordinator for the program. Uh, she has just joined us officially this summer. So she's um, landed on both feet and running really fast from what I can tell. And uh, next to her on my screen is Katie Vicari, who is our housing coordinator. Um, and I just got a text from, from Jane. So Jane Canada will be joining us. She's wrapping up a class here in a few minutes. She is the director of the ELSA program. But in a little while, you're going to hear and be able to ask questions to um, a couple of our current students. I've got uh, Ethan um, here. Hi, Ethan. How are you? Hi. I'm in Dinkmeyer Hall right now. Awesome. He's hanging out in Dinkmeyer Hall, which is his residence hall. And then I've got a couple of roommates sitting next to each other. Sophie Green and Izzy Ketchum, Isabel Ketchum. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. Coming to us live from Curitan Hall, I believe. That awesome. is correct. Cool. So they'll be answering questions. I might ask some questions to them as we go through the presentation. Um, but for now, uh, everybody's favorite part of every virtual presentation there is a PowerPoint. Yay. All right. Welcome to Elmhurst University, at least a Zoom being broadcast from Elmhurst University. So it happens we're all on campus today. I'm in a fancy con conference room with real live student art behind me. Uh, Elmhurst University is a small liberal arts university in the western suburbs of Chicago, just outside of Chicago, about 16 miles away, uh, nestled right in near downtown Elmhurst, uh, western suburbs, so it's a really lovely place. Overall, we've got about 3,500 students attending here, uh, about 450, 500 of those students are graduate students, and the remaining number, 3,000 or so, are undergraduate students. And in the ELSA program specifically, the Elmhurst Learning and Success Academy, we have approximately 47 students now, I think is where we're at. Um, uh, so we're, you know, about the biggest we've ever been, which has been pretty, pretty exciting and fun for my colleagues, I'm sure. So ELSA, yeah, um, go ahead, Ethan. Uh, found out that 34, about 34 are living on campus. So. That's true. I was going to reveal that later, man, but thank you. Um, so we are a four-year post-secondary program for young adults with differing abilities between the ages of 18 and 28. And so what makes us unique is that we're a four-year program and that we actually emphasize academics alongside all the other things like work experience, independent living skills, social recreational skills. We really want our students to look at ELSA as if it's their major here at Elmhurst University. They're very much a part of our university community. They can live on campus. As you see, uh, these fine students are currently, they join clubs and organizations. They're completely part of our environment, but we have our own curriculum that's geared and built along these kind of major three tenets. And so we're, we're always working on our reading and our writing and our academics and mathematical skills, but we're also working on our independent living skills, our social emotional skills, our uh, executive functioning skills and all those kinds of good things throughout the program. Um, the team, uh, you already met Katie Vicari, our student life specialist, uh, Mary Jo Ramacone, our career coordinator, uh, joining us in a few uh, minutes will be Jane Kanata, who's the director of the ELSA program, and you know me, Tim, assistant director of admissions, so I'm your front door guy, so if you choose to apply, you'll be working with me throughout the application process. Um, so our prospective students are between the ages of 18 and 28. We're looking for folks who have completed high school, whether that's with a diploma or a certificate. We have that age range because we want students the opportunity to give students the opportunity to go through transition. Uh, we don't require transition for all of our applicants. Not everybody does it, but it, it isn't a bad thing. And if your student uh, is successful with that, we advise it's always good to at least get some. So the average starting age for most of our students has been between 19 and 22, typically. Um, our students are in interested in developing skills and literacy, technology use, 
capacity for employment. They want to do this. They want to live independently. They want to have a college uh, experience, and they really need to have that sufficient emotional skill, that capacity for independence. There's a lot of self-guidedness here on our campus. We want them to be able to navigate the campus environment, navigate a college schedule, navigate social life, and those kinds of things. Um, and the big one is to be able to read, write, do math, and have a comprehension ability at least at the third grade academic level and enjoy, of course, strong family support for our program's objectives. So that's kind of who fits the bill for us. Um, the academics is kind of an attractive part and something that makes us pretty unique. Um, we're really working on in increasing our students' literacy, our, our technical ability, and we're talking about using technology, uh, interfacing with obviously computers and all the various software programs and packages, our phones, uh, using our calendar uh, and our email, and um, we're trying to improve our soft skills, both through writing, through speaking and communicating, uh, the use of math, uh, some of our math is life skills, some of it is a little bit more, uh, and of course, reading, uh, purposeful reading, and good old fashioned reading for pleasure, which you might not be surprised to learn has gotten away from a lot of our students at the university whether they're in this program or not. So we're still working on that whole aspect that you can read for fun. Um, our classes are majority team taught by ELSA faculty. Uh, we have a collection of the folks you, you're meeting today, as well as uh, several adjuncts that we hire that work with our program and um, Elmhurst University students as well. So we, we have a lot of TAs um, in every class, uh, usually one per um, two if you have a larger class. Um, and then something that's also attractive is our ability to offer some forms of inclusion in the overall curriculum at the university. So a lot of our students can take traditional Elmhurst University courses as what we call ELSA electives. So in those cases, our students can take an ELSA class as a pass, no pass, but they can participate in something that's specifically interesting to them. Uh, if there's a particular area of interest they have, like foreign language or business or art or theater or music or geography or, or English or even education or some of the things that a lot of our students have explored lately, um, they're able to participate in those classes to the best of their ability. We do it as a pass, no pass. Um, so that they have an opportunity to uh, make modifications if they need to. Uh, in the business of higher education, if you're making a modification, and when I say that, I mean making a paper smaller or leaving off a certain assignment that's beyond the scope of the student's ability, um, we can't do those classes for credit that way. But as a pass no pass elective, we can, though we try not to. We try to challenge our students who are interested in taking these courses. It gives them some individualization in their curriculum um, and it allows them to explore and, and push themselves, you know, if we're taking an English class, for example, or a lot of our students these days have been interested in working in education or becoming teaching assistants, those kinds of things. So they, they take some of our education courses. Those have fairly been popular. And with that in mind, we can also install a of what we call it a certificate of specialized study. So if a student has a really strong interest in a particular area, it's almost like pulling a major. So we've had students do that with graphic design in recent years where they've gotten a separate certificate of specialized study in, a, in an area such as that or business or Spanish or things along those lines. We can be pretty creative. And again, it lends over the course of four years some ability to be individualized with their experience here in the program. And it gives us this opportunity to do a, a program we like to call ELSA Plus. So when we have students who are fairly successful with these academic classes, and, and sometimes you'll find students have really strength, good strengths in areas like say math or English or you know, they're just passionate about a particular area, such as that graphic design student I alluded to before, um, we have this possibility where you can maybe take some of these electives for credit. Now, when you do that, take a, a college level class for credit, the modification clause goes away. And so the student is able to participate in the class all the way through as assigned on the syllabus. They are able to get accommodations like any other student at Elmhurst University um, if they need extra test time or those kinds of things. But it is a possible way to start building up some college credit that might move towards perhaps you finish the ELSA program and go to a community college. Perhaps you have a plan of maybe moving over to a degree program at Elmhurst University. Um, it is a rigorous, um, path, but it is a possibility. Um, again, we try to meet our students as best we can where they are academically. This isn't something that we're going to uh, start with very often with our students, but it is something we can build up towards using these electives towards moving that as an eventual goal. So it's kind of exciting. Uh, the other program that we, we offer is we call the Advantage Program. 
Um, and that's sort of the opposite model of the ELSA plus model. So when I do have degree seeking students who are perfectly able to get it admitted into the university, perhaps they're taking an SAT or they, they, they are largely a mainstream education student, um, but they need a little bit more support than what's typically available through our standard accommodations um, services. Uh, they are able to participate and take one ELSA class on the side as they kind of transition to the college uh, process. And so if they might need a little bit more support. They work with me a little bit closer. They work with our disability access and disability coordinator in our learning center, and they take an ELSA course and get some supports from us as well. Um, it allows them to sort of, you know, transition into the university. And then that becomes, it's an optional program. It's not a required thing. We don't assign it as part of someone's admission. It's just the student chooses to participate in the Advantage program, and they can kind of stay with us as long as they feel it's useful or helpful for them. So it's Kind of a cool opportunity to get a little bit more support. So we kind of try to meet our students in different places. There. The big to do though, because the ELSA program is a certificate program, we're not a degree program kind of as a bread and butter thing. Um, we're really hoping, as I mentioned in the beginning, to see our students become more independent, to improve their academics and their soft skills, to be able to live more independently. But we really want to see them seek out and hold meaningful employment upon completion of the program. And we do our level best, as Mary Jo will, will hopefully attest at some point, to get our students placed in um, employment upon a graduation. And she works with our students to uh, do a variety of internships uh, throughout the, 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 their time as students especially the latter two years. So, you know, we have students getting on campus jobs early on. You know, we're going to work with our students based on their interests. But, the, you know, the big to do here is to see that our students are uh, meaningfully employed. And I say meaningful because we want students to do something that they're interested in doing uh, as much as what we see their skills are. And so you can imagine the internships that we place are going to be driven somewhat by the student's interest. But also, as we get to know them, because we are a smaller program, we're going to get to see what sense of abilities they have. And there's been a lot of times over the years where we're like, well, you want to do this, but we think you'd be really good at that. So we're going to try an internship and those kinds of things. Um, and so we're trying to give them a lot of hands-on experience, both on-campus jobs and off-campus jobs. We have a series of relationships with a number of organizations and companies all around the area, and we can get pretty creative to that. And, and like I said, Mary Jo has joined us officially this summer. She did teach last year in the program, so she's really got a lot of great ideas and has uh, really hit the ground running. Would you agree with that, Mary Jo? Are you out of breath right now? <laughs> I'm really out of breath. <laughs> we just had an interview this morning. Um, one of the students uh, just got hired at um, Egg Harbor for a weekend host. All right, and Egg Harbor. A graduate just uh, called me and told me that he has an internship with Chicago Steel. So awesome. We're, we're rolling full steam. Cool. And that's another great thing about, you know, once they graduate the program, we don't just cut them off permanently. So we do have somebody that organizes kind of alumni meetings on a, on a monthly basis. Um, we always invite them to reach out and set up an, a consulting appointment with Mary Jo uh, if they want to kind of get some guidance on resumes or pointed in directions of, of positions that we're aware of. Um, you know, some years we've, we've found that there's more positions out there than we've been able to, to place people in. Obviously, the pandemic has hampered some of that in the last couple of years, uh, but that's starting to turn back around now that, you know, everybody's. Uh, short staffed everywhere. So uh, it's hopefully creating some new kinds of opportunities. But we we have people placed in a, in a variety of jobs. And so we're always sort of aiming towards full-time employment, um, but it doesn't necessarily always end up being that way depending on students' needs, interests, and where they are. So there's a lot of individualization with that. Um, the fun part of college is the social and recreational experience. So we really encourage and require, actually, our students to get as involved in campus as we can. Um, their first year, they're required to join some kind of club or organization. When we get to the, the Q&A panel as a part of the show, um, you'll be able to ask some of them what kind of things they do. Uh, I know a lot of them are gonna talk about Best Buddies, uh, for example, which we have one of the largest college chapters of that. But they can join any club and organization on campus that they're interested in. There's right now, I think it's the number is 75 organizations are represented at our activities fair we did at the beginning of the semester. Uh, it, FYI, this is the end of our third full week of school, I think this semester. So um, there's a lot going on. We're 
we're back fully in person um, right now. If you didn't know, uh, Elmhurst is a vaccine mandatory school. We, we did that before the state um, made any decisions on that. We, we really want to have, we're a small community and we really want to be a high touch in person kind of institution. So our goal is to be uh, a vaccine I think we're at 85% with students last I heard, um, uh, vaccined up. And then um, when we can be mass free, we intend to be mass free. Obviously with the Delta thing going on, we're, we're still wearing masks on campus to keep everybody safe and healthy, uh, but we are requiring vaccines so that we can be a little bit more. So we're back full classes, um, everybody's here on campus. And we were throughout the pandemic, just so you know, uh, we were doing hybrid. We did have students living on campus through that. It's just clubs and organizations I think suffered a little bit. Um, so now we're kind of getting back into, the, into that whole thing for, for why for that. So I've already alluded a couple of times, we have some really great opportunities to live on campus. Um, you know, pretty standard issue college residence halls as pictured right there. Um, you get meal plans, you can do singles and doubles, although I will say singles are rare. So I, I don't want students to start planning for that right away. A lot of students want singles, especially we've noticed after the pandemic, everybody wants singles and we don't have that many. So we like the roommate experience. Um, it obviously puts you right in the thick of things right here on our campus. We do require life coaching, um, so we will help with that. Katie, do you want to want to talk a little bit about that, what that means, what a life coach is, and how we go about getting them? Yeah, so so life coaching is is a setup where a student is paired with another college student, and the life coach is really there to help that student reach whatever goals that they have for college. So you know it can be a variety of different things, whether it's organization or um, healthy eating, they help to get that student connected with different events and activities on campus and things like that. So um, it's a really nice experience. We look for life coaches to work with students. It's usually between three to five hours a week. But then as time goes on, if that student becomes more independent, those hours might reduce. Um, and then as it's stated there, that's an additional cost. So it's $15 an hour paid directly from the family to the life coach, but it's a really nice support. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, and it's a great experience and the students who are in their dorm rooms right now will tell you a little bit more about what that's like when we get to that point of the show. So oh, I am the admission person. So this is where we talk about the admission process. Um, we have a pretty elaborate application. Um, it is launched as of today. I have not sent an email out because I want to go in and test everything myself because we just we, we had a few bugs we worked out this week. But the fall 22 application is now available. I, I have a lot of families who have been eager to apply. So I'm excited about that. Um, so there's a whole online application process. I do have kind of a, a uh, video I made, well, not kind of, it is a video I made on Zoom, uh, walking you through the process I can send you. Um, I asked families to kind of do it together just because, you know, there's a lot of steps and we want some writing samples from students. There's a couple of essays actually in there. Um, one of the, the, the things that are easy to do but hard to understand is that we have three letter of recommendation forms in there. Um, you can actually have them sent to the people you want um, from the application. It's actually a form we want to fill out. We don't want a traditional, oh, I recommend this student to our program. We assume that's true, but we'd like to get a kind of a rating scale completed on these forms. So there is one that a parent can do, and then the two others can come from teachers or counselors that your student works really closely with um, from the high school or your transition program or someone like that. Um, we'll want a, an official high school transcript. Um, and then we're always looking for the latest, greatest IEP and uh, hopefully the most recent re-evaluation or psych eval uh, you have access to. Um, a lot of families tend to have a new one done their senior year. So if that's the case for you, you know, we can wait for that. But um, we do like to have all this stuff in by January 15th. It is not a brick wall deadline, meaning we're not, you know, going to just uh, cut it off if you didn't apply by then. We will continue to review applications until such time we kind of hit our magic number, which typically we like to start 15 students, um, you know, and sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more. We actually started 15 this year right in the nose, so we're pretty excited about that. Um, but uh, sooner is better than later, but we're probably not going to really get into the meat of reviews and interviews until December, January, and February. So I have a lot of, you know, what's going on? What's going on? It's like, don't worry, our process is just a little bit behind the traditional um, process of October for 
um, a traditional degree seeking student. Um, so there's once the application is in and complete, I will reach out to you, assuming you're admissible on paper and set you up with an admission interview with the staff. Uh, these last two years, we've been doing those through Zoom. We haven't had a, we haven't really decided how we're gonna pull that together for this year. We're kind of waiting to see where we are with the pandemic at that point, but Zoom does make it pretty convenient. Um, we might do it in person, so I'll let you know at that time. Um, we ask that the student and the parents come and meet with all of us together, and we do a, a nice little interview. And if you're interested in living on campus, there is a second screening or what we call a housing assessment conducted by Katie. And we have a, a psychologist on staff that works with us who will take you through that. Uh, one other point I'd like to bring up here, I hear a lot of families ask me, oh, what about guardianship? Does that matter for admission? And to get into ELSA, you do not need to be your own personal guardian. That's not part of the admission requirement. However, to live on campus, it is. So we really want for our students who are living on campus to be their own personal guardian. Now, there are some um, partial guardianships you can do in Illinois. I think it's called a plenary guardianship where you can retain mm -hmm. your financial guardianship or your health guardianship. So long as a student has personal guardianship and legally can make yes, no decisions for themselves, we do that so that they can adhere to our code of conduct at the university that we are working on becoming independent young adults here. So they have to abide by the rules of the road and all those good things. So the guardianship thing only affects the housing piece. So if you do have personal guardianship for your student as a parent, um, you can move, it's a process, but you can contact your lawyer and move to a partial if you like. So the tuition, how much does all of this cost? Can it be free? No. Um, one of the downsides of a program like this is that it is a private school, so you do get private school tuition. So this Current school year, the, the per semester tuition you see there is $17,742 a semester, which annually comes to about $34,824. If I did forgot to update that number, I suddenly had doubt in that, so maybe I did, but roughly $35,000 a year, we'll say. Um, that's just the tuition. Um, there is a separate cost you can see there for, for a typical room and board, which is the the food and living on campus. And so that's gonna be another almost $11,000. So all told, we're looking at, you know, basically 46, $47,000, depending on the meal plan you pick per year. Um, we do have limited access to financial aid. Um, anybody who feels, oh, I qualify for a lot in FAFSA, um, you may qualify for a lot relative to a, a certificate program student, but we do not see anybody with FAFSA getting a full ride. So we don't have the same access to the loan program, meaning there isn't student loans available for this program. The Parent PLUS loans are not available for this program, um, but the Pell Grant could be available to you if you qualify. The FSEOG grant could be available to you if you qualify. Work study should be available to your students. And then we do a scholarship you know, based on the information we get from the FATSA. So we don't do academics, merit scholarships. We do scholarships based on the, the what's called the EFC from FATSA. So there is some financial aid, um, not enough, but it's better than nothing. Um, it is possible to attend part-time as well. Um, some stipulations with that is you don't live on campus as a part-time student and FAFSA does not help you. Financial aid does not help you as a part-time student. But currently it's about 9.32 per semester hour. A typical student takes about two classes um, on campus. Uh, first year, they tend to be here Tuesday, Thursdays. So you see that 78 semester hours are about just a little shy of 7,500 a semester for a part-time student. So if you have more questions or if you want to contact me, I do what I call personal tour appointments. It's been my thing. Instead of just sitting in a conference room talking about the program, I meet you outside of my admission office and I walk you around campus and show you around and answer your questions. I'm always available to do those. You can reach me at my email at albertt at elmhurst.edu on the bottom or at elsa at elmhurst.edu. Both of those come to me. Um, that's the ELSA line, 630-617-3752, which rings on my desk. And of course, you can visit us online at elmhurst.edu, ELSA. So I hope to see you on campus soon. And that is the end of my death by PowerPoint. I'm pretty glad I got that done in 26 minutes. So welcome back. And now Jane Kanata's here, yay. Hi, Jane. Hi there. So Jane is the director of our program and she she works as our chief firefighter and um, also 
academic advisor and teaches in the program, which is why she was a little late today. Um, what class were you teaching today, Jane? Well, this morning was reading and writing strategies, just our intro class. Awesome. Yeah, you know, like I said, reading and, and writing is a big part of, um, you know, it, it leads into everything else. So it's a real fundamental skill for this program. We're very interested in knowing that you can and like to read. Um, in the program. So now is the fun part where we get to drill our students a little bit. So just to, if you came late or didn't catch their names, Sophie Green has got her name there, but she's sitting with her roommate, Isabel Ketchum. Hi, Isabel. Hi. Cool. Um, so you guys said hi before, but can you introduce each of you, take a minute to say who you are, where you're from, what year you are? All right. My name is Sophie Green. I am a junior and I am from Raleigh, North Carolina. All right. My name is Isabel. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. I am a senior in Elsa this year. You're a senior already? Oh my God. And I also got Ethan. I'm Ethan, and I'm a sophomore from Evanston, Illinois. Evanston, Illinois. Cool. Well, thanks for taking some time to join us here. So the question, I, well, first of all, I'll open it up to any of our guests. You're welcome to either put them in chat or if you want to unmask yourself in since there's only four of you here, uh, you're welcome to turn your cameras on and, and ask us, ask them questions or me if you like, um, anything you want. Uh, but if you want to think about it a second, I usually like to start with my favorite question is, I always like to hear about what is a day in the life of an ELSA student like? Who wants to go first? Well, I guess it's me, Tim. Yeah. Uh, uh, is he like did a gesture? <laughs> yeah. um, a day in the life of an Elsa um, uh, um, her student. Um, I get up and I go to my, depending on the day. So today, I Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I have a 9.15 class to 10.20. Then I, um, then I eat lunch. Then usually Monday and Wednesdays, I have a one o'clock class from one o'clock to two o'clock, uh, two o'clock. Then I have a 215 to 320 class. And sometimes um, Monday I'll have a, an 1145 to 1245 class. But it varies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. what and I'll go to... next. Okay, go ahead. Uh in my day, I'll like get up and then like go to like uh breakfast. And then I go to my first class, which would either be at 10 30. Or at 8 a.m. All right. Okay. And then after that, I'll do like lunch. And then like Monday through Thursday, I have a class at 1. Okay. And then Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I have like a class at 2.15. Cool. Izzy? So my day, um, I do... Regular things in the morning, I get up, get dressed, brush my teeth, and make sure I look presentable. I have a Tuesday and Thursday, I have a 9.50 class to 11.30. And on Monday, Wednesday, I have a career class from 11.45 to 12.45. And I have another class at 2.50 to 4.30. Cool. So pretty, pretty typical college schedules here, y'all. So what kind of things do you guys do between classes? Uh, like sometimes you like hang out with friends or sometimes I'll be like in the dorm room. Just chilling? Yeah. What about you two? Um, in between classes, well, obviously, um, we, we hang out with our friends. Majority we, of it. we majority of it we hang out with our friends, but we also eat lunch. Um, we then I go to my next class. Thursdays, um, we have a short lunch because then we have housing at twelve thirty. So yeah. Um, oh, what's housing but, at twelve thirty? What is that? So housing is basically a big support system mm -hmm. that we have here at Elsa, and we talk about. So like roommate issues, we talk about issues in our personal lives and one of those stays in housing, stays in housing. No one can talk about it behind your backs. Vegas rules, that's awesome. So you get a little bit more, I forgot to talk about that when we were talking about the housing thing. So thank you for bringing that up, that's awesome. So every Thursday you do that with, with who? 
with Katie and Dr. Bavoni. All right, our staff psychologist. Cool. Mm -hmm. Also, bonus points to Izzy for talking about being presentable and professional. So, notes to the other two. Um, that's a good call. So, what do you guys do for fun around here? Downtown Elmhurst. A downtown Elmhurst a lot. Yeah. I'm not like, travel trained yet, but I might do downtown Elmhurst sometime. Oh, okay. Um, hey, Jane or Katie, do you want to talk about what, what he referred to? What's the travel training process? Yeah, so um, travel training kind of goes along with life coaching. So the life coaches will teach students first how to walk to downtown Elmhurst using the underpass because we are right by a train track. So we don't want students walking over the train track. So they teach them how to get there, what to do once you're there, time management, that kind of thing. Um, and then, you know, if, if students are comfortable with that, then we kind of move on to other things that might be necessary in their life, whether it be Uber or Lyft or using the Metra. Um, just things that can be practical for transportation later on in life. So that's what travel training is. Cool. Uh, Katie? Yeah. Have you seen students walk over the tracks? I have never actually seen that with my eyes, but I don't hang out at downtown Elmhurst. So, <laughs> but I think most students use the underpass because that's the way we teach it. So that's what they get used to. Yeah. It's and it's like, you like students like walking over the tracks. <laughs> Right. And that would be dangerous. It could be. It's safer that way to go so, under instead of over. So Izzy, so if you, you're talking about going, what's what's cool about downtown Elmhurst anyway? Why, why would I want to go there? Why would I go down there? Well, you've got Walgreens, you've got Jewel, you've got Buffalo Wild Wings, you've got Dairy Queen, Chipotle, you've, Chipotle. you've got other restaurants. Um, you also There's have ice cream. Ice cream, two different ice cream places, plus Dairy Queen also has ice cream. But oh, yeah, they opened a Dairy Queen. That's new. They have, um, they have the movie theater. Which does free movie Monday. Which occasionally will do free movie Mondays. I think it's Monday. Um, two years before. Um, cool. Did they I think they're breaking up there a little bit. Just so you two know, I don't know if you can tell on your end because it's like everybody looks frozen there. Oh, I, my internet is kind of unstable, is what it keeps oh. telling me. So it's really weird. Sorry for so that. I thought, hmm, maybe. So you were listing off a lot of cool places in downtown Elmhurst, although I, I don't know that the first thing at the top of my list of fun things to do is to go to Jewel and Walgreens, but hey, to each their own. They are within walking distance though, which is super handy. Um, because oh, there's also Egg Harbor down there too. Yeah, who, somebody just got a job there. We heard earlier, so that's pretty exciting. And uh, I know I've had a lot of students over the years um, in various programs work at Egg Harbor. So yay for breakfast food, which means you got to drag yourselves out of bed early on a Saturday and go get a big fat brunch, right? Pretty much. Yep. Yeah, and then when Ethan gets his travel training, he can do that too. Cool. So on campus, what are some fun things that you guys can do? Um, you can hang out with your friends in the fix center, get lunch and dinner, sometimes breakfast, and just walk around and get the feel of the campus. Cool. Lay on the, lay on the lawn. Sometimes there's like games on the lawn or mm -hmm. um, other events that have blow ups. Um, um, like literally they have like bouncy houses and like blow up sport things I've seen. And I know they throw the volleyball and the bag sets out quite a bit out. We call it the mall, which is kind of our central campus area. There were all the grasses. Um, and what about like other clubs, organizations, things like that? There are clubs. There's like best buddies. We're both on the exec board. So mm -hmm. I'm the buddy director. She's the I'm vice, the vice president and professional park coordinator. Uh-huh. Cool. Um, there's Asian Club. I think there's Craft Club. There's um, there's, there's an esports e club. There's I think a Special Olympics. Special Olympics. Uh, we'll see about that one. There's sororities, fraternities. Um, there's just all kinds of clubs. Um, and usually you get to know all of them when you do the involvement fair. So, yeah. 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 We just had that a couple of weeks ago. And so I mentioned earlier, there's 75 tables at that. So that was kind of cool. The new club that was needed to me was the film club. I don't know if you guys. Yeah, know. that was the film club. 
I wonder if Ryan joined that one. That seems Ethan, are you involved in any clubs? Uh, I'm involved in Special Olympics. I'm involved in Best Buddies. Cool. And I'm also a part of the ELSA panel. Right. That's what you're doing right now. <laughs> yes. Cool. So what about things to go to? I mean, there's clubs and activities, but you know, it's been, it's sort of early still this semester, you know, and like I said, we've been doing a lot of online stuff. So last year there wasn't as many things to go see as there's going to be this year, but you know, for those of you who are upper class students, can you think back to when, uh, what kind of things did you go to and see? Oh, freshman year. Ooh. Um, there's sometimes there's, I think soccer, there's yeah, football, football, volleyball. Yeah, I actually been to a soccer game earlier this year. Oh, awesome! Yeah, I went to a women's soccer game. That was interesting. Tried the men's. It was okay. Okay. <laughs> cool. Really scoring all that much. Yeah, our hall is right by a football field, so a majority of our outdoor sport games happen out there. Out mm -hmm. there. But mm -hmm. indoor happens in within the gym. Area. Hall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Hall is our gymnasium. There's also a fancy fitness center over there. So I don't know if any of you are into working out at all, um, but our students have access to that. And then I mentioned before, I'm the fine arts counselor. So I'm sad to hear that none of you have gone to see any plays or any music concerts or choir events or guest well, speakers. Uh, hey, I, like I, 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 I saw that my freshman year, my, um, my, my previous life coach that I had my freshman and sophomore year. She's in, yeah, she's in Disney now. Oh but, wow! Uh, she was um, she was yeah, she did a lot of dance and and she was in the cabaret and mm -hmm. yeah, I saw all those. Mm -hmm. Cool. So it was very fun. Mm -hmm. cool. And in fact, does does any of you have the current requirement of attending three to five activities a week in your class? Do you? I do. Oh yeah. So what kind of things are you going to do to help make that happen? Well, going to like Best Buddies and Special Olympics events, mm -hmm. checking on Blue Jay Life. Okay. Yeah, Blue Jay Life Check is the a... emails that they send me weekly. Cool. Um, so the involvement new, uh, new... Get involved. newsletter. Oh, newsletter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, that comes out every week. And so what's going on every week all around campus is listed in there. And then we all have these student portals that we can access. And, that, and that, that's what Ethan's talking about, right? The app called Blue Jay Life. And you can look at all yeah. the clubs yeah. and what's going on, what's coming up. And so we get really good at kind of keeping track of those things because my favorite part about the activity is that when you guys go and, and you're there for an assignment, you always walk up in the middle of it and take a selfie at it. And it's really cool mm -hmm. when you do it during like a guest speaker or something. That's my favorite. So it's good to see you guys kind of getting, getting connected and stuff like that. But there's a lot going on and it's been kind of fun this year to see a lot of those things back and see guest speakers on campus again. So concerts can start up. Yeah, so Sophie? They had a culture fest yesterday up, I think, mm -hmm. in Vanity Lounge. I just had a really busy day in class after class or, um, or we also I actually went to culture fest yesterday. Did you see the yeah. drum group? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Were they good? Uh, yes. Cool. Cool. Folks out there, do you have any questions you'd like to ask? Just making sure you, the floor is still open to you if you wish. Okay. All right. Well, then I'll ask about what your favorite class has been so far, and it doesn't have to just be this year, and then what your least favorite class has been so far, and it has to be Jane's. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so mean, too. Yeah, it's a joke. It's a joke. Nice joke. Um, I don't like the joke of fire chief. Um, my favorite class? Hmm. Gosh, that's so hard. Um, there's so I think many, I like, right? There's so many. I think I like the Elsa newsletter with Miss Granger. It was kind of. Oh nice. yeah, that's a super cool class. And it was just easy. Just you know, get everyone's information, put it in the newsletter, make sure that it looked right before it got sent out to everyone. And then I think my least favorite, I think, was math. Math was a little. I have. I don't know. Ever since like elementary like i had just had math difficulties so. me too math's not my favorite <laughs> hey commercial for the elsa newsletter what's that website can you put it in chat uh, people want to see it i know it um, hasn't been updated yet but it, there's stuff from last year on there. i have to look it up okay well you do that ethan 
Favorite class? Least favorite class? What do you think? Uh, this year, uh, uh, favorite class would be uh, computer applications. Cool. Ms. And Point. then my least favorite this year is like uh, career by design. Oh, no. Too hard? Mm -hmm. Like lots of homework. Ah, there it is. So that's a good thing to talk about, right? Because, you know, college isn't all like fun and going to soccer games and going over to Buffalo Wild Wings or Jewel, if that's your bag in Elmhurst. Um, it's also doing work, right? Working hard? Uh, yeah. So um, the website is actually www.elsanewsletter.com. Um, there you go. There it is. That was the Google search link. Cool. There it is. So feel free to visit and read about what some of our students write. They do a really great job with that. Izzy, before I get sidetracked with talking about what I was just talking about, can you tell us about your favorite class? And it doesn't have to just be this year. You've been here. You're a big, fat senior. You've been here for four years. I don't mean big and fat. I mean big, fat four years. P-H-A-T. Sorry. Okay. My favorite class would have to be um, my sophomore year. It was career by design because it very much prepares you for the real world and what life is like after college, which gave, gave us a big reality shock. Um, so if you're gonna be transitioning from freshman year to sophomore year, you almost like we have that with our new career coordinator, but she will prepare you for what's to come after college. She's such a nice lady. <laughs> and I know it's and that's Mary Jo Ramacone, if you don't know, yeah. not, not 0712986. <laughs> you guys crack me up. <laughs> My favorite would probably have to be math. Math, because me too. I, ever since elementary, math has been a struggle, and I could never keep up in that class with the information or the homework. Cool. So would you all agree that college is kind of a balancing act between keeping your homework going, having plenty of time to be social with friends, joining clubs, activities, yes, yes, going yes, to meetings? Yes, it's definitely a balancing act. Yeah. But it, also it, requires, or... it also requires time management. Yeah. So how do you, how do, you do your time management? How do you do that? Um, Ms. Canato over here. Um, she will definitely make sure you're in class. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Can you talk a little bit about how you do your time management? Like what kind of tools do you use for that? Um, I usually set an alarm, three alarms. So if I have a 9.15, I set my alarm for 6.30, 7.30, 8.30. If it's a 9.50, then it's all four, 6.30, 30, 8.30, 30, and 9.30. <laughs> At least I'm up. And then I wake up and I give it the best deal. Like, you know. Yep, she gets the... <laughs> <laughs> I'm having to sleep for two days. Yep. Mm -hmm. But it gets me up in the morning, so at least I get, and I and I charge my computer and my phone the night before, so at least, and then I take all my chargers. Yes, do keep in mind, charge your electronics the night before, but also bring them with you. Great you advice. But what about, like, how do you keep track of, like, your homework assignments, when things are due? What do you do with that? Um, agenda. You would check Blackboard as or well. Blackboard. Blackboard. Or Blackboard. Or your email. Or all of the above, perhaps, yeah. Do any yeah. of you use a calendar or anything, like an Outlook? Oh, there it Sometimes, is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. Jane, Katie, Mary Jo, is there any questions I should be asking them? Do you think I should hit them? I think you covered it. Yeah. Yeah, oh, cool. Well, I, I guess we'll, we'll wrap it up then. And if anyone else doesn't have any questions, but like I said, you're, you're welcome to reach out to me to set up what, uh, my, my, what I like to call my tour appointment where I can walk you around. It's really good to do it during a school day so you can kind of see the environment and stuff. We're still wearing masks on campus, so we ask you to do that. But um, feel free to reach out. And thank you, Sophie, Izzy, Ethan, Mary Jo, Jane, Katie, for taking some time out to join us today. Thank you all to our guests here. Uh, Dana, Sandy, Vijay, and Rhea. Um, I hope you enjoyed the presentation and I hope to hear more from you soon. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna make the robot say we're gonna end this.